Today's world knows many large-scale problems. Things like natural disaster, rapid urbanisation, food and water security and climate change. None of these problems can be solved by specialists alone. We need broad, multidisciplinary thinkers. That's why we created Spatial Engineering. My name is Victor Jetten and I'm the Programme Director of Spatial Engineering at the University of Twente. In my faculty, Faculty ITC, you can find at any one moment more than 50 nationalities of students. People who come here from all over the globe to study geoinformation science and Earth observation. It's a tremendously uh, inspiring atmosphere and through our contacts with these students we have gained enormous experience with large-scale multidisciplinary problems. And that experience we have used to create spatial engineering. Let me tell you a bit more about the program. In this video I'm going to explain you about the concepts of spatial engineering, about the knowledge fields and skills that you will acquire, I will give you some detailed information about the curriculum, I will tell you about job perspectives after spatial engineering and finally some practical information on how to enroll. The concepts behind spatial engineering are defined uh, in wickedness. Wickedness is a way with which we describe these broad, difficult problems in the world. Wickedness can be seen as a quadrant in which you compare it to what level stakeholder groups in the world agree with each other or disagree with each other and what kind of knowledge do we have on the problem itself, what kind of information do we have. That leads to four quadrants from very wicked to a more tame problem. The most wicked problem is when the stakeholders that deal with this problem are not agreeing with each other. There is maybe some competition or conflict. And we also don't know enough of the problem, so there is a lack of knowledge. As an example, in the fourth quadrant, uh, man-induced earthquakes, like we have in the Netherlands, that are a result of mining. Although people know uh, a lot about earthquakes, they are impossible to predict and uh, they give a lot of uh, governance crisis in the world where people do not agree with each other. In the third quadrant, we see that we still don't know what is going on, but we have agreed that we want to act. So uh, in that quadrant, we often see humanitarian organizations uh, springing into action after a disaster. In the second quadrant, we know much more. This is an example of a flood situation. But because there was disagreement on where or where not to build a house, people are living in flood zones and are then in danger when a flood happens. So this is really a governance problem. And then in the first quadrant, we see that all is well, we are agreeing with each other what to do, uh, we have all the information and models and plans, and the only thing we need to do is decide uh, how and where to spend our money, so to speak. To solve these problems, to go from a very wicked situation to a tame situation, we think that you always need three uh, knowledge fields. One is the technical side, say civil engineering, geoengineering. Two is the spatial planning and governance side, uh, that you need to deal with stakeholders. And three is the spatial information science and remote sensing that feeds into the other two uh, knowledge fields. And you need all three of them. And in this study, we will teach all three of them at the same level. It is clear that spatial engineering is a very broad, multidisciplinary study. And there's not any one bachelor that prepares you for it. So basically what we are looking for are students with a certain frame of mind. You have to be curious. You have to be a little bit concerned with planet Earth and wanting to solve problems, that, that helps you a lot. Um, and uh, you have to be willing to work in an international environment because your, your group, your working groups in which you are going to study is, is very international. What we do ask is that you have in your bachelors two out of three of these pillars of, the, of these knowledge fields. So a combination of technical engineering, uh, spatial planning and governance and spatial information science. Uh, you can think about uh, water governance or water management studies, environmental sciences, uh, may maybe some technical spatial planning and governance, or uh, a, a version of GIS and remote sensing studies if it is combined with a certain application. How do we then set up this study? Because you do not get a multidisciplinary frame of mind when you get all the subjects in sequence. So what we did we divided the year up in four quartiles, 10 weeks each, and the first three quartiles are big uh, multidisciplinary projects, real-life projects that, as an ITC faculty, we did in the past. These three projects uh, are of increasing complexity, of increasing wickedness. 
the first one deals with flooding in Kampala and we on purpose made it a little bit simpler than it is in reality. It is a one moment in time flood and we, uh, we assume that all the stakeholder groups agree with each other that something should be done. The second project is about food and water security in the Masamara in Kenya. And there things are already a little bit more complex. The stakeholder groups compete with each other for food and water, so there's competition. And uh, we deal with climate change and trends in time. We also deal with different scales in space. So the spatial complexity and the temporal complexity and the stakeholder context are already more complex than the first project. The third project is about man-induced earthquakes in the Netherlands. Here we have a real governance crisis where different stakeholder groups do not trust each other. And we added a third dimension in space and time where we look at earthquakes uh, in the subsurface and damage to buildings above ground. Within those projects there are different phases. And the first phase with your working group, you look at the, the situation, you do a literature study and you ask a number of questions and you design a methodology. And with that methodology, you have to acquire as a group a series of skills and knowledge uh, areas to be able to solve it. And that means that uh, we provide in the second phase a large number of different subjects and different skills. And you as a group have to choose who is going to follow what to be able uh, to solve the problem. And then follows a project phase, which is a longer one, where you do your own analysis and in that you are supervised by a tutor and that leads in the end to a project report and an oral presentation, which will be held before a number of uh, specialists in the field that are intimately knowledgeable about these projects. That means that your, set, your skill set and your knowledge, you follow a personal path in that. It is a mixture of what you already know and what you still have to acquire to arrive uh, at what we consider a master's level in all three uh, knowledge fields. But you also have to mix this a bit with what your peers in your peer group uh, are learning and you also have to know what they are doing. After these projects, the first year ends with a 10-week specialization phase in which you can select two electives from any university uh, that you can find that helps you specialize in a field that you desire. We only ask that your elective helps you with your research in the second year. The second year is built up out of three elements. You start with an international trip along a number of companies and institutions in Europe that deal with wicked problems. And you will have to discuss with these companies how they deal with that in their own political context. That is followed by a large research phase, your personal MSc research. We will ask you to first write a research proposal and then you can choose from any of the large projects we have at ITC. We have projects in the Caribbean as a result of hurricanes. We are looking at urbanization in countries like Colombia or Uganda or, or Tanzania. Uh, we have uh, an agreement with NASA in Bangkok who is looking at water and food security and disasters in Southeast Asia. And we have long-standing corporations with Indonesia and the Philippines. So you can be sure that your, that your research is, has a very international context. And after that, finally, you complete your study by doing an internship with one of the companies uh, that helped us design this program or any other place that you can secure uh, during your two years uh, master's. At the end of these two years, you will have acquired the master's level in seven final qualifications. The first two deal with science and, and academic skills. Number three and four are about creativity and being able to design uh, scenarios. And the final three are about your personal competences. It's about how you think and reason as a scientist, uh, uh, how you see yourself. There is a competence on communication and project skills. And we have a final competence on, in, on playing an international role and being sensitive to cultural environments and being, in short, an emphatic engineer. To ensure that these final qualifications are well connected to the job market and that you can immediately start working as a professional, we discuss them with a number of companies like, and, and institutions like Ministry of Water Affairs, consultancies in environmental and, and water management, uh, NGOs, Red Cross Climate Center and the Dutch Met Office. What kind of job perspectives are there after spatial engineering? You will be hired by companies or government institutions that have large-scale national and international projects because they need people who are specifically trained to deal with the many stakeholders in such a project while at the same time coming up with creative solutions. 
So if you want to enroll in spatial engineering, go to our website at the University of Twente and register. You'll find all instructions there. If you encounter any problems or need more information, don't hesitate to contact us.